And can everyone see me or see the, the screen, the presentation? Yep, yep. we see your okay. presentation notes and everything. There you go. I'm just going to go to the presentation mode. So, um, so first of all, um, this is a welcome to the Global Accessibility Awareness Day 2018. And uh, we're happy to go off and to, to have organized an event to, to talk about uh, accessibility in the Drupal community and to, to kick off a, uh, a discussion um, lecture um, forum for, for, for Drupal people to be able to, to keep uh, updating their, their skills and learning what's happening and, and what they need to be, be aware of uh, going ahead. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, so my name is Mike Gifford. I'm the president of Open Concept Consulting. Um, one of the two accessibility maintainers on this uh, this chat uh, since uh, Andrew's joined us, uh, but I um, also the, the you know the running a small shop and and uh, trying to go off and to uh, to to manage a, a team of of, uh, uh, of other people doing you know, general Drupal development. Um, so first of all, um, the um, what is GAD and how does how does that work? Um, so GAD is let's see. Um, GAD was first started in uh, in 2011 by a um, a blog post or a tweet, and uh, the first event for GAD happened in 2012. Um, and uh, uh, Joe Dolson and uh, Jenison Ascension were the the first two people that were were promoting this. Um, there was a the decision to go off and to, to turn this into um, an annual event and to, to, to find a way to go off and make it easier to, to, to keep track of this. And so they've chosen to go off and to, to, to track the third Thursday of May. And they've been doing that, um, well, we've been doing that um, every year since 2015. Um, this year we have over 50 in-person events uh, around the world. And there's, there's, there's quite a lot of people that are involved in that. There are other uh, days of, of action or awareness around accessibility. There's, the, um, there's also the, the uh, um, December 3rd is, is the um, International Day for, for People with Disabilities. Uh, and that's, that's, a, that's more, um, more of a general, um, general day. In terms of organizations that are part of GAD, there's also uh, this year you have Airbnb doing some uh, doing presentations and doing work on this. You've also got Apple, Expedia, the BBC, um, Salesforce, and and there's others that are involved as well. And uh, my my dog has just uh, is decided that she needs to go outside right now. So hang on a second. We'll just let her into the into the other room. Um, the trouble about going off and organizing events at lunch is that uh, some people get hungrier than others, um, or some animals. Um, so the purpose of GAD is to get everyone talking, thinking, learning about digital software, mobile access inclusion, um, and, and, and how to go off and to deal with people with different disabilities. There are so many people with disabilities, and, and there are so many different varieties and, and combinations that it's something that, that it's going to take a lot of public awareness for people to to be aware of how other people um, are able to 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 manage and interact with the web. Um, most everyone here is going to be familiar with the um, the poor standard, the from the the web content accessibility guidelines. But it's that 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 goal of making sure that people can perceive, operate, understand um, the web in a in a very robust uh, in, environment and, and under under robust conditions. Uh, so this is the, the goal that that we we have for uh, for trying to go off and, and to to address uh, people with with various different uh, disabilities and, and part of how, how GAD is, is raising awareness on, on this. So um, my next slide is is uh, is looking at at uh, uh, Dennis um, Boudreau, uh, who's who's uh, he's in this this slide. He's talking about NVDA, which is the uh, non visual. Um, uh, it's a, it's a non-visual tool for for uh, for allowing or uh, it's a screen reader, um, and he's was training people uh, at Carlton how to go up and, and to to manage how to to use a screen reader, but but it's 
it's something that that is quite difficult because every screen reader operates a little differently, and there's different ways to to to, to manage it. And even if you master the use of uh, of a screen reader, as a, if you are a sighted person, um, you're going to come to that with different assumptions than somebody who's blind. So. Um, you know, it's not going to be, it's not an easy process to, to, to ensure that your, your website is accessible. It's good to learn how to go off and use a screen reader and to incorporate it. Um, but the, uh, you know, using automa automated testing is really useful. Doing screen reader, doing manual testing just with a keyboard is, I mean, those are the first two things that you should do is, is automated testing and manual testing. And, and the, the third one, after you've done, only after you've done the first two should you jump to, to looking at, at testing with a screen reader. Um, in, in looking at, at accessibility, one of the things that, that makes it so difficult is that, that everything on, on the internet is changing, that there's, there's no, um, we're not in a position where um, we can rely on, on the internet being the same now as it will be in six months time. The browsers are changing, um, the assistive technology is changing, and, um, and people's needs and, and uses of the internet are changing quite quickly as well. Um, we have, uh, you know, our expectations, if you, if you, if you go back um, even to, to 2008 when the, the web content accessibility guidelines were, were founded nearly 10 years ago, um, there were things that just weren't as commonplace now. We don't, it, it, was, it, was, it was rare to go off and to have a, a browser, sorry, to have a, um, a processor within your your um, your web and to use your your web browser as a as a word processor, but now it's very common to have. That. Um, there's also um, a lot of devices and people are, are using them differently and, and finding ways to to interact. Now that that we have um, so many. Um, so many devices coming with screen readers, people are, are finding new ways to use those. So um, whether it's, it's somebody who has, is struggling with English as a second language and, and needs, to help, needs help having that, that content read to them or people who are driving to and from work, there's a lot of other people who are accessing this, this in, in ways that, that were beyond what, what the initial um, ideas and, and scope were for, for uh, uh, for, for one, one particular audience. Um, there also isn't a, a single standard for assistive technology. So um, we know that, that the, the um, uh, some, some people here may remember the, the browser wars of, uh, you know, when, when uh, Mozilla and Internet Explorer were, were trying to go off and determine with, with which was the best platform to, to, to build on. And uh, fortunately, there's more of a standard standardized approach that's being adopted in um, in the the uh, with with modern web browsers. But it's it's a um, that hasn't come to screen readers. So uh, there's going to be variations about how things work in different um, different screen readers, but also how they work with different browsers. So something uh, may work just fine with JAWS on. Um, on Firefox and uh, Opera and, and Internet Explorer, but be broken for Chrome and and trying to go off and to, to manage all of those those um, variations to see that that people who are are using that with that combination of technologies is able to 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 uh, to properly um, navigate through uh, and, and and access the information is is it's a, it's a real challenge and not something that can be be fixed simply. Um, it can be fixed, but just not. Um, we also have to worry about uh, a lot of new stuff that is is part of the the, the web. So, um, I've been working with with the Drupal community now for for um, um, I guess it's probably since two thousand and nine, trying to go off and, and to improve the the uh, uh, accessibility of of, uh, of Drupal core, and and there's a lot of stuff that just wasn't. There weren't things that we, we could really consider at that time. So slide presentation here has L Waters talking about risk and risk management in in uh, um, in the the uh, uh, in addressing accessibility. But I wanted to go off and, and and to use this to sort of talk about things that 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 have changed. So um, within the World Wide Web Consortium between Drupal seven and Drupal eight. We now have to think about HTML5 because uh, that's being standard uh, has been adopted, um, and soon we're looking at HTML5.1. 
Uh, we have the, the Accessible Rich Internet Applications or WAI, WAI area, uh, which weren't, uh, weren't finalized when we were, were developing Drupal 7. And again, that's, that's a new, new guideline that's, that's, or not guideline, but new set of standards that, that has come out that we can work with. Um, there's also the Authoring Tools Accessibility Guidelines or ATAG. Um, we're working to try and incorporate as much of ATAG into Drupal core as we can. Um, but again, that was a standard that, that didn't exist uh, beforehand. Um, we're also being aware of, of um, new challenges. So um, as, as the web more interactive, um, we're seeing people who are affected by it. So there are people who get sick with all these little CSS animations and JavaScript animations that, that get added to web pages. And how do you how do you deal with that when um, when you have a portion of your population that that you know gets physically ill when when your um, your nice interactive effect starts taking place and and, and uh, you know how do you, how do you ensure that people can turn off that um, that feature and if we could find a central way to go off and to deal with that to turn off those animations that was discoverable so that people could could know and, and could could work across uh, across a whole site so that whether it's on a front end theme or in the administration on the back back edges that that a, um, a a single cookie could be be applied that would say please disable CSS animations. Um, there are tools like that that that, that can be developed for the Drupal community and, and that we haven't haven't had the chance to to look at yet and, and we're even really aware of. Um, as being problems back when we were developing Drupal 7. Um, Dragon naturally speaking uh, and window speech recognition are also issues that, that, we, um, that, are, that haven't been dealt with well enough within the Drupal community. Um, but the, the whole um, uh, voice control is, is actually going to be um, significantly impacted in the next little while by the um, by the Amazon Echo and and Google Home uh, type applications, as as uh, we start adding these these devices to our sites and start looking at how to go off and incorporate them, I think there's going to be a lot of of um, um, changes in terms of how people are developing their website uh, in order to go off and to expose that semantic information to uh, to tools like this. Um, I know that that uh, Acquia has just recently announced uh, involvement with the Georgia. Uh, government on, on including their um, their voice, uh, I think it's an Amazon Echo uh, control system. So um, some interesting um, means for, 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 for people with some disabilities to, to be able to have greater access to, uh, to the web. Um, and we'll see how that, that applies and, and, and how successful that, that case study is. But, uh, but again, these are, are new things that are happening because the, the, the technology is, is, is changing so quickly. Um, Worth noting that, that there's there's some things that, that have become much more popular um, in um, in in uh, with with more advanced CSS as well like uh, CSS gradients and, and putting images in the background. Not that that's that complicated, but but back when we were doing Drupal seven, there weren't really tools to evaluate CSS gradients and to, to determine whether or not there are, are, were uh, accessibility problems with those. And uh, we were able to go off and 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 with Drupal eight by leveraging some better tools, be able to understand that there were problems uh, with that that we needed to be able to, to resolve and have. Um, so, uh, so this slide is of, of Angie Byron, and uh, this is at Toronto at a sprint that we were organizing, um, one of the first ones around Drupal 8, and uh, it was, uh, um, it was nice to, uh, to, to as one organized by Everett Zufeld and others at uh, um, the My Planet Digital Space. Um, and uh, so, so um, yeah, accessibility is, is a, um, um, it's sometimes hard to see. Some of the differences that, that are being, being applied are things that most people aren't going to notice. Um, so, uh, you know, color contrast changes to go off and make, um, a, a background accessible. Often the differences between what what is an accessible uh, color palette and what isn't a, an accessible color palette is is difficult for many of us to see. Um, I think most people will be able to see the darker blue that that is applied in 
um, in Drupal 8 versus Drupal 7, and, and that was based on an accessibility requirement, but it's, it's not something that most people are going to go off and, and be shocked by. Um, there's also um, a lot of, of uh, incremental changes that, that are, are happening in, in Drupal 8, and, and, and they're little things that, that uh, whether it's adding area or to provide more semantics or uh, providing um, little little changes that that are um, that that help to define the um, a web pages structure more effectively like our use of of area landmarks or adding HTML5 uh, or even um, adding HTML5 elements into to a web page like the the, the phone number um, these are, are things that that now have semantic meaning and can be um, can be more effectively implemented by screen readers, but but they're uh, they're things that that aren't necessarily easy to identify or point out. Um, and some some of these these changes are are hard to see. Um, and the um, a slide from a a, a boff from uh, from DrupalCon. Um, and it says making it easy. So looking at ways to go off and to make make Drupal access make accessibility easy with 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 Drupal. And a huge part of what we wanted to do with with Drupal seven and eight is to to build in good defaults. Our assumptions have been that if you build a website so that it is um, as uh, as accessible as possible by by default, that People will try and build on those those defaults. That they're they're going to leverage core, whether they're building new modules. And uh, Drupal is a very um, very um, structured in a way that that is is um, uh, that that really allows for uh, for people to to, uh, to to build on those APIs. So people generally don't build build forms um, without leveraging that that central API. So we can incorporate a lot of those those best practices. Uh, but also, it's a, it's a culture where people are sharing um, best practices. And if something is done in core, if that is the best practice that is done in core, often modules will try to, to emulate that best practice. And if they don't, if they fall short and, and um, maybe use some other mechanism, maybe they remove a title as opposed to make it hidden, um, people will, will create a, a patch and, and be able to um, identify a problem uh, with the accessibility of that page and eventually will get fixed because the, the best practice that's defined in core um, is, a, is essentially the standard that everyone is trying to achieve and it's an agreed to standard. If there wasn't that um, agreed to uh, standard in core, then, then a lot of the modules and themes wouldn't necessarily go off and, and um, do as much as they are of trying to go off and, and, and follow that best practice. Um, also, a lot of times people will go off and, and borrow from an existing module and, and copy the code base that's used in that if they're, they're developing a module or a theme. So um, if we've got good, good, model, good examples in core and in, in some of the popular themes that everyone uses, those are more likely to, to be, um, those practices are more likely to be adopted as people copy functions around and, and, and look at, at the ways of, of leveraging that, that, uh, the work that's already being done. Um, it's also really useful to, to have a transparent issue queue. And a lot of uh, proprietary systems don't have uh, a, a, an open and, and, and accessible uh, issue queue, which means that it's much harder for people to find out if that problem has already been, uh, if that has come up before. Because Drupal has a, a transparent issue queue, you can easily find um, those accessibility issues by searching through Google or by looking at the accessibility tag in um, in Drupal.org in the issue queue there. Um, and that, that really helps to, to, uh, to help focus people and direct people. Uh, we also have tags for area, for a tag, for um, what else, for, for inline form errors. I think there's one uh, for color contrast. So, so there's some common accessibility issues. You can often uh, zip into the right area by, by being able to, 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 to manage and, and look through the issue queue. Um, Drupal's also benefited from a, a standards, a, a culture of, of standards compliance. Uh, long before uh, accessibility was an issue in, in, uh, in Drupal, there was a, a commitment to try and, and build Drupal to be as, as standards compliant as, and, as, as possible um, as part of, of the, the, the approach that Dries and others had, had taken. Um, and so we've been able to, to try and, and identify best practices 
and to, to where there aren't best practices already implemented in the community, um, we've been able to, um, to try and propose them and work within the Drupal community and with, with the, the broader accessibility community to try and, and help define or test and evaluate best practices if they're, they're not already ones that, that, uh, that we, we know we can draw on. So um, one of the, um, there we are, lost the slide. So I've now got an HTML5 logo on the top of the page, and that's I've talked about this briefly. Um, but uh, Drupal 8 has brought to it a lot of advantages simply by moving to HTML5. Um, so we have uh, greater SEO, uh, and, and not that that's, that's the, you know, um, that, that certainly is, and, and yeah, more SEO, more mobile friendly. Um, you're able to go off and, and to break up different components so that, that uh, we have an additional means for people to, to navigate uh, through a website. So the, the header elements and footer elements, um, we've added additional uh, form elements. I've mentioned the, the, the phone uh, input form, but also there's an email input form, and those are both part of the core. Um, it was a, there's a huge amount of, of effort to try and, and uh, move from the, the um, from, from the Drupal 7 means of, of managing the collapsible field sets to, to using uh, details and summary elements to have those collapsible field, field elements. Um, and that's something that, that was particularly useful when you're dealing with, with sites that have um, embedded, where you need to have, have um, embedded uh, elements, because in Drupal 7, you can't have um, embedded field sets, um, but because we've moved to using um, details and summary elements, uh, we no longer need to worry about having uh, embedded field sets uh, in, or, or yeah, m multiple redundant recursive uh, field sets in, in forms. Um, we can also benefit, well, it was, it was interesting in, in terms of uh, detail and summary, in that, that uh, the Drupal 8 project went and, and pushed ahead on, on the implementation of detail and summary before there was really solid browser support for this. Uh, we felt that this was, was the direction that the web needed to go in, and I think we were able to help push the web forward to, to uh, push browsers forward to be able to, to, to implement this effectively. Um, there's also uh, the use of figure and figure and fig caption as part of, of um, of Drupal 8, so uh, that's, that's part of CK Editor and uh, something that, that we've, uh, there's no native way to go off and to, to implement, implement that yet, but with figure and fig caption you can, uh, sorry, with CK Editor you can use figure and fig caption in that. Um, I think this is uh, a, this is the area all the things slide. Um, I think this was a, um, um, something that Carl Groves used in one of his presentations, but uh, um, we've we've definitely added a lot of area or the accessible rich internet applications to uh, to Drupal 8, uh, and and it's it's something that that we believe we've done in the right way. Although there certainly are ways that that um, um, area has actually reduced the the accessibility of of some sites if it's implemented wrong, um, particularly for JavaScript focused websites. A lot of times they just people add in area hoping that that will will suddenly provide that definition and proper semantics without necessarily understanding how to go off and implement that um, but uh, we've added uh, abstracts for, for uh, roles uh, presentation and alerts we've added uh, landmarks um, and, uh, for, and that's for like the header the navigation complementary uh, information content information banner uh, and main landmarks, um, those are being being added to to Drupal 8. Um, and uh, again, this is this is just a, an additional stepping stone to allow people to to understand the content and understand how to to manage and, and organize that content. Um, it's something that that is um, people people who use screen readers generally leverage um, the the headings and the the uh, the area landmarks to to find information about the page. And uh, both of them are, are useful to be able to, to give context. Um, we've also provided a uh, state change. So if you're, you're jumping between, um, between information, so if, it's, if, it's, uh, if, if you've got information that is, is hidden or if, if, um, if content is checked, then that, that is, is, is presented 
um, in Drupal core as as uh, um, through through area. Uh, so that's that's useful as well. Um, and we are we're using the area labeled by and area described by in many different cases, to, particularly in the form elements, to be able to um, tie in descriptive information along with the the label of a uh, of an input form to make sure that that's all semantically tied together. Um, we've uh, one of the other big advances for for Area Live has been sorry the advances in Area has been the implementation of Area Live, um, and we've done a bit of this. We haven't done quite as much as as we we need to, um, but when content changes on the um, on, on a website, when, when content is dynamically updated, screen readers need to be alerted to say that the content on the page is up as it has been updated. Otherwise, they won't know. So we can um, we've got a now a centralized mechanism to to uh, ensure that that those changes are announced to screen readers when when they happen. Um, we just need to make sure that we go through consistently and and add that and also make sure that the popular modules that that are being used also are aware of area live or sorry the um the uh drupal announce and area live and, and how to go up and, and incorporate that into uh to their pages as well so uh this is a, a slide from um or a photo of of uh, an accessibility sprint in montreal that was organized by evolving web and uh, wanted to talk about display none, um, which is one of the other things that we've we've um, one of the big changes between Drupal seven and Drupal eight um, is that that we've um, we, we've moved to how things are are dis are managed for display none. Um, the idea of, of centralizing that that functionality and and, and making sure that um, that there's a single way to go off and to deal with the the problem of um, CSS display none is a is a really um, a really really key one that that, uh, that the Drupal community has has understood, um, but um, but we you know, because now there's 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 a one common way that that uh, that people are using um, CSS to hide content. We're able to update that in a central organized way. So um, one of the things that that has happened recently is that uh, CSS clip is no longer supported. So um, we need we need to be able to look forward and say, well, how do we we define um, CSS display none for for hidden text, for visually hidden text, for invisible text, and how do we make sure that text is is visible um, on focus to make sure that people who are keyboarding through a website are able to uh, to skip the the landmark navigation and make sure that they're able to get to the main content as quickly as possible and avoid having to uh, to, to tab through um, hundreds of, of menu items in order to get to the the, the, the form that they're trying to fill out, um, and uh, you know we made the, the the change in Drupal between Drupal seven and Drupal eight from using the element dash uh, invisible format to using a to adopting the HTML five boilerplate approach um, because we there's there's in Drupal eight a, a sense of of um, trying to to, to to build on other pieces of software, so that that proudly built elsewhere uh, approach to um, and we didn't want to to be in a situation where where everyone had to learn the Drupal way of do, doing things, and and uh, so so we adopted the the approach used by the HTML boilerplate, and that's that's an approach taken on by 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 more um, as well. So that that nomenclature is 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 um, more easy, more widely uh, adopted than than what we had implemented in in Drupal seven um, back in well whenever whenever Drupal seven was was released it seems like an awfully long time ago now. Um, so uh, we now have a, a uh, an image of a, uh, a wheelchair that that uh, a new um, accessible icon um, that that is being promoted to to help portray people with dis disabilities as active participants and um, I do this partly because I, I like this the slide and the, the the demonstration of people moving forward um, but also to to highlight you know that that the the you know some of the other um, tools that we're, we're doing to help make it more active and, and, and easier for for people to to to, to manage the accessibility of their site. Um, so I mentioned uh, Area Live and Drupal Announce earlier. 
Um, we've uh, also um, added the, the Drupal tabbing manager. So um, making sure that, key, that the uh, part of WK 2.0 is, is making sure that you're, um, you're, as you're tabbing through a website, that it follows a logical pattern. Um, and that with the, the Drupal tabbing manager, we have additional controls over how that's done. Um, so that's a, uh, a nice tool to be able to, um, to control the, the uh, to see that we're not locking um, people into keyboard, keyboard traps and that they're able to around um, more, a more complicated interface. Um, there's also configurable defaults as part of, of Drupal 8, so you can, uh, or sorry, configurable descriptions, so you can, you can customize the descriptions more um, than we could previously in, in Drupal 7. Um, and um, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, inline form errors here because it's a, um, it, it's a really important part that people generally forget about. Um, and uh, there's also a, a coming a deadline coming for uh, for for the inline format errors module for for um, for Drupal eight. Um, so inline form errors, um, the, it's essentially whenever people are filling in forms, if you if there's an error on that form, people need to know where it is and and make sure that it's it's presented in a way that that everyone can understand and and be able to to engage with. Um, and it's a it's a really critical flaw for for any organization that needs to meet the WK 2.0 standards, which is frankly um, almost well almost all organizations in the U.S. are now being being held to that standard by the Department of Justice, um, as well as um, you know organizations uh, and government institutions in, in around the world are. are um, are being held to the WK 2.0 AA standard. And if you have an interactive web form that doesn't have a, um, doesn't have appropriate uh, methods to go off and to report errors back to, uh, to a, a user to allow them to be able to, to um, address those errors uh, in, in an organized manner, um, this is a, is a serious failing of WK um, and, and something that, that needs to be, be addressed. Now, to build this into core and have this enabled in core by default, and it was for a short period of time, um, inline form errors were, um, were, were, were available for, um, for Drupal 8. There, unfortunately, there were enough quirky things that happened in, the, um, in FAPI, in the forms API, uh, and enough glitches that those decided after about a week to go off and yank it out of core. Um, and it's been sitting as an experimental uh, module for uh, since well since Drupal eight was was released. And unfortunately, if we aren't able to go off and to 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 stabilize um, inline form errors uh, and reach a stable uh, a stable code base by uh, July thirty first, it looks like um, that that uh, the inline forms error module will be. Will be brought out of core and will, will be a, um, a an, an additional add-on module. But but it's if it's not part of core, it's something that will be um, it, it'll be a, a real shortfall because even, even if it's not enabled by default, it'll be a shortfall since since so many interactive websites um, are lacking this this ability to go off and provide accessible feedback. Um, so. Uh, Daniel Schmidt has been working on this, as, as have, have others, and, and this is, is something that, that is, is um, really important for, for making sure that, that where the error occurs, there's a really quick and simple way for people to, to get to it, to be able to understand how to fix the problem, and to make sure that, that it's, it's uh, properly managed, particularly in, in complex form elements. And uh, um, we're, we're, we've certainly made a lot of progress in the last few months, but more work needs to be done over the summer. So I would, would definitely uh, recommend that people take a, a further look at this. Um, I want to move on to the, the next slide now, which is, is, is whoops, sorry. Yeah. This is um, Vincenzo Robano meeting with Dries and, and Jam, and uh, you know wanted to talk about some other big deals that we've accomplished in Drupal 8. Um, Getting CK Editor into core is really being useful. It's pushed the CK Editor, editor community to be, to be more accessible and allowed Drupal to, to leverage that, uh, the accessibility that's already happened as part of, of uh, CK Editor. So, so that's great. 
Um, in, in Drupal 8.1, I think we brought in the, um, a button in CK Editor to, to help provide the, sorry, 8.2 rather. Um, we, we were able to go off and include the language of parts um, more easily. So if you're dealing with multilingual content, you can identify what pieces of your, your text are in a different language, which is particularly useful if you're dealing with, with um, uh, websites that, that are, uh, if, if you're serving inter international audiences or even have people who, who use phrases from other languages, um, you can use the, um, the, the language apart button, large language of parts button in CK Editor to help um, enable uh, to, to, to wrap that language that um, that text with a, a span tag that identifies the language that it's that it's in. Um, we've we've uh, we've also uh, bringing views uh, UI and views into to uh, to core is being being really huge in terms of, of things that we can be proud of, uh, but also will help the accessibility of of uh, of, the, of sites moving forward. Uh, so, you know, having caption summary elements available for uh, for tables and being able to to have an interface that that people with disabilities can can uh, navigate around um, and and not have a major piece of core have accessibility barriers that would stop them from engaging with it is is uh, it's really quite important. Um, I've talked about a tag in other presentations, but um, a tag is is really the web easier for content editors. You know, so much of the time as, as web developers, we'll go off and implement a website and then realize, um, you know, when, when, when people start adding content to the website that, that the content they're adding has accessibility problems in it. And uh, we, can, we can do more to try and, and uh, to, to be aware of uh, content editors to, to produce more accessible content. Um, and... I'm running out of time here. I, have, I should have trimmed this slide a little bit more, but uh, um, I wanted to say that, that, uh, that you know, accessibility is, is very much like security. We do need to have constant vigilance. We do need to be looking at ways to, um, to, to see how, how the technology is changing and how we can accommodate our users more effectively. I've touched on some of the elements that we've, we've uh, addressed with that. Uh, but there's there's certainly uh, more that that uh, that need to be need to be done, um, and uh, this is very much an ecosystem of technology, um, and we we need to be be aware of the changes that are happening in in that broader ecosystem. Um, one of the big ones is is the the drive for for greater personalization. So so many websites like uh, BBC My Way are. Um, there's a lot of people who want to, to, to organize that information in different ways to go off and to help them uh, understand that information and, and we can provide greater personalization for, for our users. Um, this is a photo of uh, Everett Zufeld, who's one of the um, Drupal 7 core maintainer. Um, and uh, I, I just in terms of tips for, for managing your, your website, um, you know, use some automated tool to go off and to evaluate it and, and have as many people in your organization use those automated tools as possible. Um, I do like the Wave toolbar uh, because it has Firefox and Chrome plugins and because it's, a, uh, it's got a nice, easy interface that, that shows people that red is bad and they don't have to, you're not presented with, with much other than, than uh, uh, red icons. Um, there's also Tenon.io, which is uh, if you register today for Tenon, um, you can. I think, I think Carl Grove is, is offering a 25% discount for any of the services managed through Tenon if you re register with it today. Uh, but but it's a, again a, a good testing tool. It's, it's not a free one, but but they've he's done a lot to try and and build in some best practices and keep pushing that interface to be able to uh, produce produce more. Uh, or to find more accessibility errors uh, and, and to convey that information more effectively. Um, there's also um, Tangaroo, which is a color contrast checker that's available on GitHub that's quite good. Um, and uh, you know, uh, as far as tips go, I just also want to say that there's, uh, there's nothing quite like involving people with, with uh, disabilities in, in the process of, of addressing um, these accessibility challenges. Um, there's a, a phrase that's, that's really quite important, which is, Nothing about us without us, and uh, I think that that often uh, that's something that's that's uh, forgotten by organizations. Just to try and find 
uh, people with accessibility challenges that, that, that they can engage in the system and, and, and find ways to, to, to make the sites more meaningful and useful for them. And I like to go off and, and throw in this kitten slide because what is a web, um, web presentation without kittens? But uh, you know, as much as there's free as in speech and free as in beer, I, I like to think about free as in kittens. Um, if we don't find ways to nurture, love, and and uh, feed these these uh, these these entities, um, you know, they're not going to grow up to be friendly cats. They're going to end up to be something that uh, that wants us to scratch our eyes out. Um, so, you know, how do we try and make sure that we're finding ways to nurture that? Um, that software that we use? How do we try and, and find ways to contribute back to that? And, and a lot of organizations aren't able to do that by contributing code, but there's a lot of other ways that, that people and organizations can, can contribute back, whether that's through uh, reviewing accessibility issues or learning about accessibility challenges or proposing questions or challenges that aren't reasonable uh, resources for. Even participating in, in a uh, discussion like this is a great way to go off and to, to contribute to the community. And finally, um, interested in hearing if there's any presentations or any uh, questions. I can I can be reached uh, on Twitter and my my company's website is is there as well. But I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and jump back to the presentation. Thank you, Mike, a lot for this presentation and, and kicking us off on the the GAD day and also this uh, Drupal meeting uh, that we're trying to kick off. Um, I, I guess I have one question I keep having about is that at the BOF we talked about the automated testing and how it's really only catching, you know, depending on what tool you're using, like 30, 40% of the actual errors on a page. Um, I know there's manual testing will will catch more of those, but like do you, you anticipate more um, improvements on these kind of tools? Because I feel like a lot of um, companies and organizations would really benefit from having tools that are even more robust? More robust? I, I, I think that, that the problem is, is relying on automated testing and, and only using automated testing. Um, if, if, if all you're doing is, is using whatever site checker tool you're, you're using to, to, uh, to evaluate your site and, and you run it through some automated test and you say, hey, it's all green, it must be good. That's the problem. Like that, that only catches the low hanging fruit. It only catches those elements that can be um, mechanically identified. Um, there's there are other elements like just just tabbing through a website is is so important. If you can if you can tab through your website and know where you are and know um, where your your focus is, um, that's something that will will um, will identify a lot of, of issues as well. Um, so so try to go off and to to understand how to go off and and, and um, to do that basic manual testing. Um, and there's a certain more that you can do with screen readers, but uh, and learning how to use a screen reader, but but um, you could also go to the community and say, you know, how do, how do we go off and, and encourage people with disabilities to look at our website and report information back to us, and make it clear to them that we want their feedback and that we're looking forward to go off and going to, to fix the problems that, that are identified. So that it's not something that is, um, that's a, a uh, an exception or something. Oh, you send an email to this email address and maybe somebody will care. Like it is, it, you, you've got to go off and, and be more proactive and let people know within your accessibility page that this is something that you, you need to hear feedback from users and how they're actively using that content. And you can provide spaces to make that. But, but it, it, yeah, it, or reaching out out to the people within the, the accessibility community who um, who are, are looking at at uh, um, at and, and trying to to, to find um, you know, see if you can find people to to look at these sites and give you some some feedback and do some user testing with people with disabilities. It's it's a um, there's so much that can be done on that side that that is a lot more than than just doing the um, doing an an, uh, an automated test. Yeah. So just don't stop with your automated automated testing, and they will get better, but they're never going to be good enough to evaluate what a what a person can 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 understand. Does anyone else have any questions? I can keep asking questions myself, but I just wanted to give anyone else the floor. Or if you don't want to talk, you can do it in the chat box. 
or, or even uh, Andrew, it'd be interested, interesting to hear um, what some of the, the issues you're, you're interested in right now. Yeah, hi. Uh, so in just in case anyone doesn't know me, I'm one of the other, um, I'm the other DA accessibility maintainer and uh, it's tea time over here. I live in England. Um, so I think uh, the thing to follow up on what Mike said was about the uh, inline form errors module and how we you know we do have this uh, deadline to get it stable i think it's by the time they announce that 8.4 is going to be in beta we need to have uh, got a certain number of issues ticked off um i'm really really glad it's got an, uh, its own maintainer uh, daniel schmidt who's uh, <laughs> who's not you know so it's got its own maintainer that isn't me and mike you know and that cause that kind of frees frees me up to go and look at other stuff but um the in terms of getting inline form errors to stability, I, I think it's actually looking really, really good there. There's a there's a roadmap issue, um, which uh, does a job of um, you know tracking what what are the outstanding remaining issues uh, on. I'm just trying to share my screen at the minute and find the uh, find the roadmap issue. Can people see my screen? I've got it open now. So could you move it a little, uh, little bit? There you go. So there's a roadmap issue, and uh, it's got these kind of um, looks at what we need to do for inline form errors and groups and by must have and should have. And uh, hopefully you can see that it's an awful lot of them are already crossed out, and most of them have got uh, either a pink or a green, uh, a pink or a yellow background, which uh, means that they've they're, they're having work done on them. Those are either needs review or needs uh, needs work. But if we look down at the the ones that are actually there as must have and should have, um, by my count, we're down to five issues. And I looked at all of those, and they 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 all have quite a lot of progress on them. And so I think the end the end stability for inline form errors is definitely in sight. Uh, there's one with a grey background there. That means postponed. And I've, just today I've realised that that's waiting for me. So sorry about that. Uh, apparently I've got to provide steps to reproduce a bug. Uh, but it's, it's going really well. A couple of those issues, I've got uh, looked at them as well. One of them is um, the styling of uh, showing how uh, inline form errors uh, are presented visually when they're hidden away inside of uh, details and vertical tabs, collapsible elements. And the right now we can see on the issue, the screenshots have got designs for all of them. And the remaining work there is to, to make sure that uh, some of the tests are all right and we need more screenshots and things. So there's certainly a whole load of progress has been made on this and it's, it's very close, I think. Um, what, what's one of the other one? Yeah, this is the one that, that I need to provide a bug report on. The idea here is that uh, if you've got a, an, a, an error that happens to be inside of a collapsed element, like a, a details or a vertical tab, then um, you can follow the links which are presented at the start of the page, but they don't always necessarily open. They, they don't cause the, the vertical tab to be opened up correctly. Um, so that's that's another thing which again we've got a solution for. We're just in the stages of writing the tests and uh, cross browser testing to make sure it works with everything. Um, so yeah, that's that's just really what I wanted to say about inline form errors. It's uh, it's not doom and gloom. There's a very good outlook on it. I think I'm optimistic. I'm definitely yeah. optimistic too. But we we do have to to cross that finish line, and so. You know, yeah. making sure that that is not sort of left off uh, is, is going to be quite important. And, and uh, so if there's people who are looking at getting involved or, te you know, looking at some of these tests, there's certainly ways to, to get involved to, to help nudge those issues ahead. Thank you both for the link. And uh, it, yeah, it did sound a little doom and gloom when Mike was presenting. So I'm glad, Andrew, that you popped in and told us that it wasn't all, <laughs> all gloomy. Looks I like think a lot one, of the, one of the things about inline form errors is that it was the very it was one of the very first experimental modules, and originally and Mike touched on this. Originally, it was meant to be part of how the the core form system worked, but uh, it was as we were getting towards the 8.0 um, betas that 
that it had too many rough edges and someone realized it could be ripped out as a, a as an optional module and put in the experimental category along with the migrate um and and that's when it started uh, to to lose attention and uh languish for a bit but one of the great things about it being threatened is that um you know a lot of people were, were annoyed about this and there was some kickback and we managed to get a much clearer policy now on what the what the process is for uh, um, experimental modules uh, being made stable or removed from core. Um, it wasn't just you know I think I think uh, there, there was a point where we said why why are we why are we having our module targeted but uh, that's not the case we've uh, got that clarified. Absolutely, um, yeah. I think it's interesting to look at inline form errors and where it was and and where what the initiatives are now in Drupal because at, at the moment there's a big initiative about workflow and uh, workflow is about teams uh, or you know lots of people will be visiting a piece of content in if you've got workflow enabled uh, but inline form errors is all about individuals and how they interact with the form and so if uh, I think there's a way in which we can start you know, promoting inline form errors as being helpful for the workflow uh, features because it's the workflow is about teams. Uh, but if one member of your team has difficulty with the form, then it you know it slows down the whole process, the whole team activity. So, I think I think that's something that that uh, is a really good reason to promote inline form errors. That, that's yeah. a great way to think about how how often that we we. Um, Accessibility improvements can be used to leverage other other things and benefit other people. So it's it's a uh, it's just another example where where you know, when we bring inline form errors and when hopefully it becomes part of core as, as enabled by default, then we can rely on that for for other things with whether that's the workflow module or um, or, or other uh, other code base that we that we want to go off and build on for for individual or, or group work. Like it is it is so in, integral and. and uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, we, yeah, we're, we're making good progress on it for sure. Thanks, guys. I think, there? yeah. What, what'd you say? Is there anything else? I think. No, I think we reached our end of our time. Um, I just posted that link you sent in the text over to my um, internal group. But yeah, maybe reposting it um, on the Drupal channel and letting them know again about the deadline because I'm not sure if people realize that. but might be getting with that final kick. Um, hopefully Mark got everything recorded and we'll post that up soon for people who couldn't make the meeting. I know that there were some conflicts with the IDI, um, not the IDI, but the uh, DID, <laughs> just kind of dyslexic moment there. But uh, the diversity has their own um, meeting, uh, diversity channel has their own meeting at this time as well. So there's a little bit of overlap. Um, some people wanted to come today, so. Um, we'll post that for them and for others who couldn't make it yeah, and go from there. Um, but yeah, we appreciate your time, Mike, like more than you can, you can ever tell you and everyone else for joining. Um, we really appreciate chatting with people and not just hearing myself talk, <laughs> but get to hear all the other experts talk too. So it's wonderful. Any That's last great. questions or mm -hmm. thoughts, anyone? All right. When's the next one? Uh, to be determined, but hopefully next month, and uh, hopefully Donna will be able to present. She's going to give a different focus on accessibility, talking about digital strategy and marketing and sales, kind of the very beginning, getting the buy-in from the client. Um, and so we'll pick a date and a time that works for people, and especially people like Andrew, I know, who are a little bit ahead of us <laughs> in the future.